Hi, my name is Kelly, and I'm here to talk about the Gospel of Mary. The Gospel of Mary has aroused considerable interest in recent years, in both scholarly and non-scholarly circles, and it was written by Christopher M. Tuckett. As with other non-canonical Gospels, it shared the revival of interest in these texts in the modern era. Even though the Gospel of Mary is not very straightforward, the Gospel of Mary is referring to Mary Magdalene. The Gospel of Mary has been used as part of the evidence that Mary Magdalene exercised a significant leadership role in the early church and more general claims about the leadership roles of women in early Christianity. The Gospel of Mary only came to light in the modern era by manuscript fine and interesting enough it is not attested anywhere outside the manuscript containing its text. It is not cited or mentioned by any of the church fathers and it is not listed in any of the discussion or list of canonical books. There are only three manuscripts and all of them are fragmentary. The, more, the most extensive version appears in the Berlin Codex BG8502. The manuscript written by Coptic and probably to be dated to the early 5th century has been known about since the 1890, although due to a variety of circumstances, wasn't actually published till 1960. The assistance of the Greek fragments has an important bearing on the possible date of composition of the Gospel. The fact that both manuscripts are to be dated to the thir early 3rd century and that both are probably copied from earlier man manuscripts indicates that the gospel must be dated before the end of the second century. The two Greek fragments overlap completely with the BG text. This is useful because it enables one to compare the BG version that has been translated to the version that is assumed in the original language. The texts do not agree on a number of different ideals. Some of the differences are trivial some not so much. How does the Gospel of Mary present Jesus? The first thing that they tell us about this particular Gospel is the first six pages are lost, so it leaves the Gospel opening in the middle of a scene portraying a discussion between the Savior and his disciples set at the resurrection. Also, the Gospel of Mary appears to know four of the canonical Gospels. Another thing about this Gospel is that the setting appeared to be a post-resurrection one, so that when Jesus is speaking, it is a risen one. According to the canonical, the Gospel of Mary isn't sure if it is a Gnostic text. And second, what is implied here about the leadership role of Mary and other women the Savior is answering the third questions about the end of the material world and the nature of sin. He teaches them that at present, all things, whether material or spiritual, are interwoven with each other. In the end, that will not be so. Each nature will return to its own roots, its own original state and destiny, but meanwhile, the nature of sin is tied to the nature of life, this mixed word. People sin when they do not recognize their own spiritual nature and instead love the lower nature that deceives them and lead to disease and death. Salvation is achieved by discovering within oneself the true spiritual humanity the true set nature of humanity and overcoming the deceptive entrapment of the bodily passion and the word. The Savior concludes this teaching 
with a warning against those who would delude the disciples into following some heroic leader or a set of rules and laws. Instead, they are to seek the child of true humanity within themselves and gain inward peace. After commissioning them to go forth and preach the gospel, the Savior departs. How does the gospel present the disciples in discipleship? In 9.5 to 10.10, the disciples are troubled and anxious about the teachings they have heard. But Mary appears on the scene to comfort them and encourage them. Peter then said that the Savior loved Mary more than all other women, and then they want to know more about the conversations that she alone knows. Mary tells the disciples of her vision that she had about the Savior, and the disciples get mad that they are wanting to know what Jesus is doing having a secret conversation with the woman. Also, in the first section of the Gospel, Jesus himself is teaching the disciples. But it seems separable from the account of Mary's vision where Mary is the narrator and the Savior is the object of the discussion, not the teacher himself. And this made Peter's reaction somewhat forcible in the end. Levi explained to Peter that Jesus loved Mary more, which is assumed that meant more than both men and women. The dialogues are generally concerned with the ideal of the Savior as a reminder to human beings of their bond with God and of their true identity, as well as the realization of the believer that redemption consists of the return to God and liberty from matter after death. The Gospel of Mary is playing adultery as sin. In the Gospel of Mary, it takes place Mary as witness of Jesus' crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. My question that I have is why did people believe that there was something going on between Jesus and Mary Magdalene?